Okay, everybody. Everybody ready to talk a little history? Yes. Okay. We're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to have a little bit of public input here. How many people graduated from Westfield High School? Well, I tell you what, you guys don't look to be 131 years old. Is that six people? you got to remember, I said Westfield High School. Nobody here graduated from Westfield High School. You graduated from Washington Township or Westfield Washington High School. And I, I kind of lost that myself. I, uh, I was going to have to go look at my diploma. <laughs> that's that's a, the actual fact. You graduated from Westfield, Washington, or Washington Township High School. That's what it was. Uh, Westfield High School was started around 1878. And Mike, wanna show us the original high school? Now, that's, that's the other question I wanna ask. How many high schools has there been? How many? Four. How many? Four. Five. There's been five. This is the first one here. This was built as a town school in 1856. And uh, it was just a smaller building of this version. This, they kept adding on to it. It used to sit directly behind this building in line with Walnut Street. If you would have took Walnut Street through, you just about ran into it by the time you would have got to the church over here. Um, the town started high school type teaching around 1878, but you really couldn't tell the difference between that and the grades. It was kind of mixed up a little bit. In 1892, they actually did have the high school, okay? And that's when you would have graduated from Westfield High School. In 1896, they decided that the towns decided that they couldn't do too good of a job of this anymore, and they'd kind of turn it over to the township to run. Since the township ran all the other schools in the township, the congressional districts, so they turned the money and the building and all that over to the township, and they had an agreement that the township would, would, would provide the high school and the grade school for the town proper here. And that's when it became Washington Township Public Schools, okay? Now, let's go back a little bit. We need to go back to uh, 1892. I told you 1892 is when they actually first started the first high school program, and that's what the R. Westfield book says, but they moved it. They decided for some reason or another in 1892 to transfer to the Union High building all the grades as far as high school, and this school back here remained the grade school. So you went to Union High, Union high to, to go to high school. That's the second high school. That's where you all got fooled a little bit. You didn't know about that. But they came back in uh, 1896 when they turned it over to the township. They came back over here and they took it away from Union High. So it was only up there, according to this book, about four years. Everything was going pretty good until 1904. When one evening, that would be about February of 1904, that school burned. Mike, can you show us the pictures of right around 1904, the graduating class? Um, when I was putting this picture in, I noticed somebody peeking out uh, the window to the left, the farthest right, the second window from the left. So I just put it in there. Uh, That's Steve Osborne. Osborne. He, Steve. <laughs> no. he just wouldn't come out and take his picture. I guess, yeah. There, there you go. There's the graduating class of 1903. And behind them, I don't know if Mike can blow it up or not, is the school building. This used to be, I was told, like a grove over here of trees. And obviously they're standing in this grove to take their picture that day. And uh, the, uh, 
didn't really have that big of a uh, class. A lot of those people are teachers. I want to point out one in particular, a man by the name of Mr. Walter Jessup. He is right here. He ended up being one of the premier educators in Westfield. Uh, he was well known and well respected for many, many years in the public school system here. Um, the other uh, picture I wanted to show you, and I'll pass it around, is this picture. This is a picture of school children, 1901 or 1902. And the great thing I like about this picture is that the person that is in this picture took the time later to write down all the names of the people in the picture. Yes. <laughs> and he was a famous fellow here himself. And his name is Byford M. This belonged to Byford. And he is in the picture here. I'll pass this around with all the, uh, the names. And uh, you can take a look at it. And there's also another picture I'll pass around of, a, of the teachers. This is of the teachers. And these pictures were taken the same day. The reason you can tell is because of the shadows and the trees on the buildings. So I'll, I'll just pass those around. Not the original, but the copies. Thank you. Uh, Jim, you I was might going to point out that that building is after they put the addition on. Yes. And I think that part of the limitations of changing and running, having some of the schools at Union High School, was that they didn't have enough room for handling all the students. That's and, correct. And that it was in about 18... 98 that they expanded it and made it into a four-year high school. So yes. some place about that time was when they got that addition put on there, which enabled them to have more room for students. Right. And by 1904, they had 300 students in the town proper. And uh, Stuart brings up a very good point. There were several, and they're in the back of the uh, annual listed, several people that actually graduated from Westfield High School twice because it was a three-year school, and they graduated. And the next year, which is 1898, they changed it to a four-year school, and they graduated again, <laughs> which I thought was very unusual. Um, but anyway, uh, the school did burn in 1904. And this is where it really gets kind of interesting. After it burned, the, the building and the property was owned by the town. You've got to remember that. The town owned that building and property, not the township. But they turned it over to the township to run. So when it burned, they had to scramble. It burned everything up, all the books, everything. So first thing they did, they had uh, John Baldwin, go up and talk to the people that own Union High. And they wanted to see if they could lease the building, if they had made it some kind of a, uh, you know, uh, agreement. Well, they did, but the, the uh, Township Advisory Board never acted on it for some reason or another. Uh, they decided that they wanted to build a, another new school somewhere where it would be more appropriate that could handle the load of the 300 kids they had now and for the future. So they, they started to look for land. They asked the trustee to look for land. Well, the trustee decided that uh, it would probably be best to buy a piece of land up here on North Main Street, kind of adjacent to where the old school was at. And that trustee's name was Eli Stalker. Well, Eli got kicked out in 1905. He, he lost the election. And in steps Ira Stambro. Well, Ira, he must have second thoughts because he decided he wanted to go up here. He wanted to put it where it was finally located on the Ann Bowman property. Well, here's where the big problem came in. The town already told the township board that they would give them the insurance money, which amounted to almost $1,500, and the piece of property to be used for the purchase of a new piece of land for the town school. 
Well, the township sent the trustee to talk to the Bowman people. Said they wanted to buy five acres. They wanted to buy five acres. Well, they came back, said they wanted $2,000. $2,000 for five acres in 1904. What do you think, Steve? That's too much, isn't it? That's what they thought. So what do you think they did? Start condemnation proceedings. So they're going to get it one way or another. So they, they told the trustee to start those proceedings, of course, in the courts over here in Noblesville, and uh, try to get that property. They were going to get it for what they wanted to get. They wanted to give $1,000. And this thing went on and on. This started in 1904, and um, they had meeting after meeting. Um, April 18th of 1904, the trustee asked the board for $20,000 to build a new school and buy the land. Well, they uh, just said, no, we're not going to act on that. We don't care. Next thing you know, um, when uh, Stambro took over, he asked the board for $1,000 to buy some land again. He said, okay, we'll give you $1,000. That's when they tried to purchase the Ann Bowman property, but they fell short. They said, no, we want $2,000. So they started the proceedings to condemn it, and uh, they went on to April 27th of 1905. So time's just passing on by. Well, in September of 1905, the, trust, the trustee asked the board to reconsider. Don't do the, the condemning and go ahead and pay for the property what they asked. Because where are we having a school at? In storefronts, little homes, whatever they could get. Probably a lot of them was held in this building. They probably had many a school day in this building during that time. They, they went for almost three years. So you can imagine Probably some of the people were getting a little bit perturbed, you might say. What are they doing? Let's, let's get our school built. Let's get these kids back to school. Well, um, again on January 6th of 1906, the trustee asked the board to purchase the Ann Bowman property again. They refused. By this time, the court had come back and said, well, you need to pay them what they asked, but you can only purchase three acres. That's for three acres. Well, they thought that was really ridiculous, and they weren't going to pay that. So in March 6th of 1906, uh, Nathan Pike, who was a member of the board, all of a sudden he resigns. <laughs> He's, you know, he, things are getting a little hot, you know. So he resigns, and uh, they decided that uh, they were going to put another fellow in there. They nominated him, and another month disappeared or two. And they finally decided that uh, he couldn't take the position by law because of some technicality. He had a position somewhere else and he couldn't take it. So then he had to go back to scratch one and get another guy to take the job. And then they finally got uh, a fellow by the name of Clark to join the board. Then the trustee finally uh, put their feet to the fire and said, okay, what will you pay for that property? They said they would pay $1,000 for three acres and $1,500 for the five acres. Well, they didn't get him anywhere. So on we go. Finally, on uh, April 19th, 1906, they had a meeting, and guess what? A lady by the name of Mrs. Nathan Martillos came in to speak to the board with a lot of other ladies. <laughs> And they had a petition with them, had 100 signatures on it. And they politely asked the board to move forward very quickly and settle this matter as their children were being deprived of a good school, of, of good hygiene, because some of these places, I guess they were holding school, didn't have appropriate uh, facilities, and uh, their education was suffering. So, you know, the board's sitting there and they listen to all this. And the ladies politely leave after they're done. And guess what? What did the board do? Nothing. <laughs> no, they decided, no, they're still not going to do nothing because of this price problem. Okay, a couple more days go by. They had a special meeting. By that time, the town council or the town board had come together and they said, hey, look, we'll 
go ahead and we'll we'll give you uh, an extra five hundred dollars, which we think that property, when it's sold, will make or roughly close to it. And we've got all these people lined up that was, will subscribe and give you money. In return, when you get this property sold, you'll pay them back. It's a subscription type of a deal back in the day. And guess who was the two of the top fellas on that list? Who would you think would give the most money and be right at the top? Iris Stambro, $50. And Mr. Clark, $50. They probably got tired of people throwing tomatoes at them. You know? <laughs> they couldn't even walk down the street anymore. Because I imagine everybody was pretty mad at them by this time. So anyway, they, they finally decided that they, asked, they said, to take the extra 500, they already had 15, they said they would give, and they bought the property. And uh, they hired an architect to design the building, and then the uh, building was uh, formally bid out, and the bids came in. And we have a misprint in the R. Westfield book. It states that the building cost $3,200. The building cost $32,000. Um, and there's one piece of that building left. Of course, it went on to become a high school that most of you I'm looking at tonight graduated from. It had grown in 1923 when they added the gymnasium and the auditorium. And I believe it was 1956 or 58 and they added the grade school on the other side. It was earlier Before than that. that. Was it earlier than that? 40 something maybe? No. I went in, I got in the 50. last semester of my fourth grade year and I started school in 47. And you were in that end building there? I was in that new wing on the west side for one semester. 47. Okay. Well, that's good to know. About 50, I guess. Because I couldn't find anywhere where they had, you know, they, they told when that was built. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, it served as a high school for thousands of children here until uh, 1968. And that's when the new high school that I started in when I was a freshman was built, which is now, help me out, is that the middle school or the, yeah. what is that up for now? Part of, part of the middle school. That part of the middle school? Okay. And uh, it served until in 1990 something when the new high school was built is that right right 1992 or 93 I'm just trying to get up to that five number <laughs> so we have we have the one that used to be back here that's number one we had Union High which served for three or four years number two we have the uh, old one on uh, State Road 32 which is number three then we have the other one back here it was built in 68 which is number four, and of course now we have the present high school, which is number five. Um, through all these years, you, you've, you've got to realize that education is very important to people of Westfield, especially the Quakers. They had their own high school in Union High for many, many years. Uh, you know, they, they held education dear to their hearts, and they wanted their children to, to be better educated than they were. So education was a great thing here in town. And when they built that new high school over here, and they opened it up in 1907, that was supposedly one of the best buildings as far as facilities and, and everything in the state. There wasn't anything any fine. Uh, one thing is you read the old record, and I came across this. We do have it in the museum. It was donated by Helen Bray. This is a record of the advisory board from 1900 until 1917. And in this, it tells about all of these meetings and all the problems that they had trying to buy that property because they just wouldn't pay them the money for it. Um, and how it all ended up. When they finally did get the building built, they forgot one thing. They went to all these grandiose plans and everything was just perfect. But what did they think they forgot? Sidewalk. They didn't have a sidewalk to get up to it. Kids had to walk through the muddy field. So they had to go back and appropriate more money to build the, the sidewalks so the children wouldn't have to walk in the mud to get to the school. It, and it was originally the five acres, but as we all know, later on, 
They kept adding more land and adding more land and adding more land. I wish I'd have got a chance to talk to uh, Jim Carey today. I believe Jim told me years back that when he was president of the senior class or president of the football team, one or the other, uh, that one of the duties of that person was to pay the annual payment on Letterman's Field. And Jim said he was the one that paid the last payment on Letterman's Field. So the Letterman actually bought that from whomever owned it and paid it out over a series of years, which was interesting to me that you know, that's the way it was done back then. Today, no, that would never happen uh, unless somebody gave somebody some property for the school. But most of the time anymore around here, people, they want you to pay for it. So, but anyway, that, that's, that is the way that the history kind of went of these schools. But there's a lot more than what I just talked about tonight. I mean, you could probably sit up here and spend two weeks if you wanted to, to dig into it really deep. Um, but I'd like to hear some, some memories of the, uh, High school up here on 32 with some of you that we used to attend. Pictures, maybe? Or? Well, go ahead and go on, Mike. There we go. That's the way the school looked in 1907 when it was first built. You notice the two dormers. I'm sorry. Go back a little bit. You notice the two dormers on top? They were there till about 1940 something. And they must have had to repair the roof. The original roof, according to the specifications in this book, was slate. So they've had to repair that. Uh, go ahead and move on. Now yeah, there's a class in 1911. Um, Very I believe, smart dressed. Well, <laughs> is uh, I believe yeah Ezekiel Armstrong's in there somewhere. Yeah, the front row. Uh, there he is, down yeah. on the bottom. Yeah, front row. There's the addition they built in 23, which was a great, uh, great building. I was only in it a couple of times, but we used to play a lot of basketball back here in that old gymnasium. And there, of course, is the fourth high school, 1968. And do we have a picture of the new one? Probably not. Were they all on the same property? No, 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 all different locations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once it was done up on 32, I think it was such a firm anchor there, an open space, that they, they kept acquiring land, so they kept building. I remember when I first moved to town, the elementary school that was behind this, uh, well, just about, it was in between this school and 32. It wasn't there. They started cutting a road to build that. And again, that must have been around school when you were there? Well, up until, you know, say, 1950 or so forth, it was, it was that ground that was directly north of the original high school. But the one thing about that original high school that was built in 1907, it had an indoor basketball court it was in the basement of the mm -hmm. southeast corner of the building. It didn't have very much headroom. They had talked no. about that, that all the 
Westfield players learned how to shoot so you didn't have any arch. And uh, the competition didn't know the restrictions. <laughs> it was direct, <coughs> directly benefited the Westfield players. Who, 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 let's see if we can find out who the oldest graduating person is here tonight from the high school. What year, what year did uh, anybody graduate from 1950? Uh, 53. 53? I graduated in 52. 52? Anybody earlier from Westfield? No? Looks like Stewart wins. 52. 52. 52. Rachel and I graduated in 68. We were the last class to graduate out of the old building. We were yeah. the last ones to walk. I remember that. I remember crying walking on the street. I think they planned that. I don't think they wanted you in the new one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were honoring. We, we were honoring. We, we raised a <laughs> I remember to build that new high school there was quite the controversy back then, just about like it was back in 1904. Yeah. Uh, we even had meetings, uh, we got to go to some of the meetings in the yeah. school. Yes, we did. Yeah. Didn't they have one person that kept objecting? I remember yeah. there was one person that kept objecting. They got a remonstrance to get them. It got yeah. stopped for a year. Yeah. yeah. The delay cost them enough that they had, had all, they got taken away from the school. In for free. Well, I remember. I think. I think the end of it was one day. I I, uh, I walked uptown, and uh, somebody in the middle of the night, the corner where the park sat down, was just an empty lot. Uh, Harry's filling station had been gone for years, and uh, in the middle of uh, Friday night, somebody had moved a two-hole outhouse onto that property, and they had a sign on the top of it that said. McCarthy High, I believe. Yes. <laughs> and I think that might have been the fellow that was remonstrating yeah, all the time. Too, so I think that was the end of it. I think right. after that they got what they wanted. Yeah, Bruce. I have a friend, uh, Bill Ressler. His father, Floyd, uh, I think this is interesting, and don't do this anymore, but uh, the school district, uh, Washington Township, got a loan from him. He offered a finance the building of one of the schools at a cheaper rate than any of the banks and finance companies were. So an actual resident of the uh, township uh, uh, funded the building of uh, the school, gave them a loan at the, a lower rate. Yeah, in this, in this book here, there's many instances of that, where if they needed a little bit of cash for something, uh, all of a sudden somebody would pop up and say, well, I'll loan it to you at a certain rate cheaper than they could get it at the bank, I guess, or maybe the tr going through the trouble, and they would take them up on it. Yeah, that was not uncommon in those days. They would do that quite often. Uh, we have up here tonight, uh, actually there's three books here. One of them is the record of the teachers when they signed up to teach. It was kind of a contract they had to sign, and uh, it's, it's kind of interesting uh, to see what they worked for. What, what do you think around uh, 1899 was the uh, rate that you would receive to teach at Westfield High School. Is per day. Per day? Per day. No. How much? Thirty-three dollars a day. Ooh, they've been rich, huh? That was so like a dollar. Two dollars. Women got paid less than men. They did. Really? It might have been less than two dollars. The men in here seem to make around. Three dollars. Most women did not make more than two dollars. Some made a dollar eighty-six. I guess it all depended on too what you would teach or how many years maybe that you had. It didn't really tell in these contracts. Uh, the, the, I'll open that book up and you can look at some of them. But be very careful. Of course, these books are you know 111 years old, so <laughs> you want to be careful. Uh, the other one here has an inventory list in 1899 of all of the schools out there in the township and they list them by district district three district so on they also have district number one which i believe is old number one wasn't it yeah. would that have been old number one 
Yeah. Anthony? And some of, the, some of the items they have in there, you know, very sparse. I mean, uh, you got three buckets, obviously, to carry water. You know, you got a couple of brooms, a brush. Uh, school supplies were almost non existent. Paper, uh, pens, um, they had a couple of maps in there. Each, each building had a few maps. Uh, almost, almost nothing. You know, I, I, not like today. I mean, I don't know where they got their books. Uh, maybe Stuart can help us out. Did they have to purchase their books back then? Or were they given books to rent like they did in our day? Don't know? I, I've never seen what they did in there. Mm -hmm. But I do know that uh, apparently students earlier than that owned their own books because I have some copies of some of my great, great grandmother's generation of school books and it had the school children's names in it so and uh, apparently they kept them because they're still in existence yeah i don't remember what year they went to renting books but i know my mother and dad had a collection and half of books that we had to buy because the whole night were bought yeah i know i worked my senior year, I worked in the bookstore okay. or in a, uh, the bookstore at the school, but in, in a book store that sold books. So and somewhere along the line, you had to buy all of them. You had to buy it. Yeah. And somewhere and along the line, started leasing them. Well. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> there is one footnote I forgot to tell you, and this is kind of interesting. In 1903, the question was put to the township board whether or not they wanted to build a new town school. And they all voted nay. <laughs> so the fire forced them to do it three months later. <laughs> they had to take the question up and they had to, they had to take and get, get it done. Because obviously this building was old and it wouldn't handle all the students <laughs> of the time. And uh, that, was, that was one of the good things uh, about the whole thing, the way it ended up. They built a fine school that could handle all the students at that time, which was, I couldn't believe, 300 in the town. That's quite a few. And, uh, and of course, went on, as we all know, for years. And everybody enjoyed it and has fond memories of it. I uh, take any questions. Anybody got any questions? Um, you figure there was other high schools, uh, like at Hortonville. They had a two-year high school in the frame building that they used up until about 1910. Uh, that frame building got uh, condemned causing Hortonville to build a new building. But also there was a, maybe before 1900 in Jollyetteville, well they had like a two year high school. But it talks about building that one. You know. I understood <laughs> Rowdy boys of Jolliet built Burt's that high school. <laughs> so they had, build, they had to build a new building. Well, they have the date in here of, uh, I think it was 1901 or so, where they built the Jolliet Mill School and the contractor that they hired to do it. Uh, I didn't realize that they also had high school teachings. So in other words, if you went to Hortonville and you graduated in two year, what would you do then? Come to Westfield to finish? I think so, because I remember Florence Swan, Florence Stevenson, Florence Nurse Stevens was her main name. And uh, at that time, she lived about halfway between Hartonville and Westfield. And she had gone, I believe, to Hartonville. And then after that, well, she uh, had to walk across fields and come to high school here at Westfield. Tim, do you know when they first had buses? Well, Mike, can you pull up some more pictures? You got a picture there in 1913. That's a big picture of the oh buses. Indiana Historical Society picture. What kind of buses? Horse drawn or boat ride? There's, there's one. 1913. There's the hacks waiting on the children. Now that's school, of course, 1907. So it's you know only five years later. You got a good picture of the Dahmers on the, mm -hmm. the roof there. Mm -hmm. I was told by uh, uh, 
Betty Edwards that she rode in one of these horse-drawn hacks until 1921. These pictures are from the 1913 yearbook when uh, Jim asked me to put the pictures in he wanted. I found these on my computer and we had them scanned from Don Carey's copy of the yearbook. Mm -hmm. And I'll just go through. Oh, i put that one in there too because it honors the, the educators, of course. We have the bell. Um, there's some tidbits in that yearbook which are really nice uh, about... Um, Mr. Dixon asked, uh, where do you find the strongest man? Carl said, out west. Mr. Dixon, how so? Carl, they hold up trains. <laughs> so they're strong. I have some little tidbits in there which I really need to, to hear about what people joked about back then. Here's a 1913 graduating class, that's the juniors. Fortunately, in the yearbook, it doesn't identify who is who, but you can probably find it from other pictures and, and go there. If you ever take pictures, for goodness sakes, right on the back of them, who's in them? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the sophomores, much if bigger class. If you don't able to read cursive writing, you have to print them. <laughs> <laughs> good idea, yeah, printing it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, my mother would have graduated from Westfield in 1918, but she didn't finish. But she rode the Bonon or the Midland train. Okay, yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. We heard they, had, they had an agreement with the, the railroad that they could do that. So I don't know when school buses actually started going out farther like that. We had a picture, but I didn't find it in the limited time I had, where they had all the bus buses lined up in front of the I've got two it. buildings. I just passed school. it around. I passing around. Oh, that's mm -hmm. the one. Okay. It's 1921. That's 21? Mm -hmm. okay. They also had in the yearbook the alumni, class of 98, for example, um, an important member there, LaRue Carter, Westfield doctor of medicine. Uh, he did the hospital course in Indianapolis. He was one that graduated two times. Oh, he was a two-timer? Yes. He graduated from the three-year didn't hurt him. <laughs> they commissioned uh, at Westfield as a four year, and he came back and graduated in uh, 98, I think it was. Nice. I'm glad it's, uh, uh, you were able to tell me about that, Stuart, because when I found that in the back of that annual that time, I thought, well, Somebody's made a tremendous mis mistake here <laughs> <laughs> because you can't graduate from high school twice. <laughs> but I guess you can. I guess if you consider graduating from uh, Hortonville from a two year high school, you could have come to Westfield and graduated from a three year, and then you could come back. <laughs> yeah, you could have graduated <laughs> three, three times, yeah. I have one of the pictures in the yearbook again. Uh, the Women's studies, uh, the, whatever they called it. Home economics. Home ex, uh, I think they called it something else. And then there's the. That was the shop. The shop. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see that there were men in there too. Did it look like that, Steve, when you went there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it nice? Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of nice. I think yeah. the shop was downstairs in the old high school. The old. The 1907 building and it was Must be. down one side of the uh, boiler room. Boiler room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there were some uh, sports teams in there too. The soccer team, of course. Uh, lots of people there in the soccer team. Yeah, 1912? Yeah, 1912, 1913 class. Yep, soccer. Mm -hmm. Soccer. I had no idea. Yeah. That's what the ball says. Doesn't look like the soccer balls nowadays either. And then here's the baseball. Or basketball. Uh, basketball, sorry. Does it baseball? Basketball, yeah. Eight folks. <coughs> and then they had a poem in there, which is very nice. I leave it up for you guys if you want to read it. You can come by. I'm not going to recite it with my German accent. And <laughs> It's very nice and uh, ends theory, if you want to you read it. I'll leave it up there. One thing that was interesting that we didn't get here tonight, and uh, Joe Wheeler owned the pictures, uh, and now Don uh, Day owns them. He bought them at the auction. 
they were two pictures of the 1903 and 1904 football team. And they're back here, and they're practicing or maybe having a game or something. Uh, very old photographs. I had no idea they had a football team in 1903 Westfield. So that, that uh, has been going on for quite some time. Very interesting. We'll have to get some pictures of those, or copies of those pictures. No. <laughs> <laughs> While you're in that period of time, I went down a few years ago. They were celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. And it was formed about 1909. Mm -hmm. And they said the first complaint that was filed against the new ISHAA was filed by the superintendent of Westfield School, claiming that when they played Sheridan, Sheridan had a player who was 21 years old, <laughs> which in those days, even if you had gra hadn't graduated from high school, if you were 21 years old, you couldn't play high school football. So they their investigator to go investigate it. And when they found out the guy had voted in the William Howard Taft election, <laughs> <laughs> they took that as proof he was 21 years old <laughs> and, and Sheridan had to forfeit the game for the <laughs> well, Dave, that's nothing new. They're still doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> and well, they didn't say if the coach was right or not. <laughs> stories I've heard through the years passed down about ball games and contests and you know <laughs> arguments and things. Uh, I think this is the official records of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Mm. Do you have a copy of that? Yes I do. I'll donate it to the no, library, great to have a copy of or to the to the historical society. Thank you for that. Some of those were just following the tactics of Purdue University. Like <laughs> 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 do. Uh, football players went to the railroad yards and uh, <laughs> they got some of the workers to apply for a class at Purdue so that they played on the football team. <laughs> they had all kinds of physical <laughs> capabilities that normal college students weren't going to have. <laughs> oh yeah, I can imagine some of the things that happened back in those days. Okay, well hey, that's all we have tonight. Thank you. Uh, maybe sometime in the near future or next year, we might expand on this a little bit, maybe go into a little more detail about some of the other times of the schools. But uh, tonight, we just wanted to kind of get an overview of the five and let everybody know that's where they were at. Because several people have come to me, and they had no idea that this school back here ever existed. They thought the first Westfield High School was the one on 32. So we always try to make sure everybody gets all that information we think they deserve. Hey, enjoy your, the uh, refreshments and uh, stay as long as you like.
Yeah. Um, We've all been Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 